Facebook-backed currency DM recently announced they would be scaling back on their global ambitions and launching a U.S. dollar stable coin. Joining us now is DM co-creator Christian Catalini, who is also the chief economist of the DM's association. Welcome to the show, Christian. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. All right, Christian. You know, so, I mean, DM, I mean, Libra came out really strong with Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook-led consortium of big corporates that we all knew. And, you know, now they've scaled back with so, and now they've rebranded themselves as DM. Would love to get an update on the status of the project right now. Yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned before, I think our first version of the white paper was extremely naive. And, and so starting from that uh, first document, I think we've been extensively engaging with regulators across the globe uh, and as part of that, our project has evolved on a number of dimensions. Uh, so you may have noticed that we've added uh, additional controls to protect consumers, uh, additional controls to combat financial crime on the network. And, and so the entire project has developed and, and evolved uh, to really meet what we think the regulators will expect from any project that scale in the next few years. Mm -hmm. Now, so, go ahead, Lawrence. Oh, I was going to I was going to ask you the, the whole idea behind uh, Libra. First of all, good morning. The whole idea behind Libra was that it was a, a basket of currencies that essentially a stable coin that was backed by a basket of currencies. Is that now going to be walked away from uh, with DM? Yeah. So, you know, we with white paper, too, we already kind of, you know, described our intention of moving away from. Uh, the basket currency and starting with single currency stable coins. Uh, to some extent, the mission and vision is exactly the same. Uh, we, we had designed the basket currency for cross-border use cases, and we can, you know, we believe that we can support uh, many of those use cases also with single currency stable coins. Uh, that transition was, was really driven by, again, conversations with regulators, uh, concerns about interference with macroeconomic policy, and also ensuring that we have a robust design that can scale uh, not just in developed countries, but also in emerging economies. Christian, so you've or, moved from. Well, I was going to ask that, that you have moved from California uh, to California from Switzerland. Uh, was that part of the whole uh, walk away from from the uh, basket idea? And is Facebook going to be more in control of of this going forward rather than it being a consortium? No. So you know, if, if anything, the DM Association is an independent organization with twenty six members. Uh, Facebook is only one of them with the equal voting power, uh, like everybody else. Uh, the move from Switzerland to the United States really reflects our new strategic shift. Uh, there's been an evolving regulatory environment in the United States. And so as part of that, it made a lot of sense, especially since we're starting with the DM dollar, um, to really move everything uh, to the United States. Um, and under that regime, you know, the, the FINMA license is not going to be required anymore. So we've withdrawn our license application. So, Christian, earlier this week during consensus, Federal Reserve Governor Lael Brainerd spoke to Coindesk about private stable coins versus public stable coins and linked it to the early days of America. We actually have a clip. Let's have a listen. If stable coins uh, were to be widely adopted um, and uh, serve as the basis of an alternative payment system oriented around new private forms of money, there's a real risk that you could see fragmentation of the payment system and that you could see consumer protection and financial stability risks um, because of the risk of run-like behavior. And so I would just hearken back to that period, the free banking era um, in US history, when the inefficiency, the fraud, the instability in the payment system uh, that was associated with active competition among issuers of private paper banknotes led to what eventually was a, a uniform form of money backed by the national government. So that is, I think, a prominent consideration as we think about a system oriented around private money um, and a digital payment system oriented around what is essentially public money. So Christian, listening to Governor Brainerd, uh, you know, she discussed concerns about private issuers and a proliferation of such issuers could get pretty messy. Uh, you know, she hearkened back to the time in early America when private banks would print dollars based on their own reserves. Are these concerns that you share? So I, I want to say that we strongly agree with Governor Brainerd. Uh, and in fact, you know, what we're advocating for is different. 
I think she's absolutely right. When you look at the stablecoin landscape today, many things are called stablecoin, uh, but that's a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, when you look under the hood at what the kind of the stability requirements are, the economic design, and how many of these stablecoins today would perform under market stress, I think she's right to connecting them back to the period of wildcat banking. Uh, we don't have consumer protection standards that are up to par uh, for what you know we're really suggesting, which should be more of a public-private partnership. We see this almost as a retrofitting exercise, as a temporary exercise where uh, issuers such as you know Silvergate, in collaboration with DM, uh, will be issuing a DM dollar. But the moment there is a CBDC, we are the only stablecoin project, to my knowledge, that has committed publicly to phasing out our own token and replacing it with the CBDC token. Um, the main reason being that we do believe that there's a strong complementarity with what you know, Governor Brainerd and, of course, the Fed can do in terms of providing stability, providing reliability of the token, coin, um, and private sector participants such as DM, uh, in terms of like how can they get that token uh, to be used by businesses, by merchants, by consumers in retail transactions, um, so that you, you first of all get faster time to market, um, and also you get really the, the benefits of both private sector efforts that can really work in customizing those use cases and driving adoption, and of course, the public sector role, which is super important in ensuring macroeconomic but stability. Christian, I, I wonder if the technology, protection. though, can come to a point where currencies can just be easily made, just as easily as web pages can be made today. What do you think of this prospect of a proliferation of private currencies and which one will win? I, I think we need to draw a distinction between <clears throat> you know, what's happening in the cryptocurrency space in terms of new types of digital assets. All those digital assets make different choices. Uh, economists tend to think about it in terms of market design. These are different trade-offs in what those currencies really achieve. Uh, when we're thinking about medium of exchange, uh, our belief is that building on, on the fiat rails is, is really the way forward. Uh, what we're trying to do is really reduce fragmentation in payments and in financial applications by taking fiat and really trying to digitize it in the best way possible. So do you see the uh, potentially the the DM project being nationalized, so to speak, where uh, you provide the technology for the federal go for the Federal Reserve, let's say, to issue a CBDC, and ultimately stepping back, uh, a separate question, but kind of related, is how do you see this affecting international monetary policy? Um, is, is it going to change the role of the dollar as a reserve currency uh, at all? Will will these CBDCs do so? or will uh, cryptocurrency in general do so? How, how do you see that playing out over the next five to 10 years? Yeah, so I wanna clarify that we don't see ourselves replacing the role of the public sector. So if you think about different layers of the stack, uh, a CBDC would be kind of the bottom core layer and the public sector can play an, an incredibly important role in ensuring the stability and reliability of that layer. Uh, where DM comes into the picture is on top of that layer. So think of it as a payment network that you know, enables new use cases and applications on top of what the public sector will deploy uh, in the long run. Uh, so network fo focused on payments that will, you know, for example, allow merchants and businesses to use this to accept payments in the same way they do today on slower uh, and higher cost rails. Um, when it comes to macroeconomic policy, again, we made it really clear that we want to work together with central banks and really find solutions that do not interfere with local uh, macroprudential rules and, and, and regulations. Uh, even in countries uh, where, you know, uh, you, you could imagine people trying to move uh, from their local currency to, to a DM dollar as a store of value, uh, the design of our network is really, you know, meant to, to mitigate the risk uh, of currency substitution. Now, you hear often... Yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, the project started off as a solution for the unbanked worldwide. Has that also pivoted? Is the unbanked still at the core of your strategy? So expanding financial inclusion is absolutely at the core of our strategy. Uh, that said, it's going to take us some time. When you look at unbanked and underbanked, whether it's in the U.S. or even abroad, uh, the critical junction is the last mile. How do you reach that user? And especially, how do you enforce uh, really robust uh, financial crime controls? Uh, that will have to work over time through development of better identity standards. If you do not have a better identity standard, it's very difficult to separate you know, a good user uh, from a bad actor. And so our work is going to take you know, multiple, multiple years probably to unfold because that, that gap at the end point, it's one that is difficult to solve even for a project like DM.